So this video is obviously about spoilers. So obviously there's going to be spoilers. So I'm obliged to say spoiler alert for the following films, books, and TV shows. I'm mainly doing this to appease the internet hordes, but by the end of this video, you'll see why this really doesn't matter. All right, enjoy. Like most kids, I was a huge fan of the Harry Potter books growing up. I was so stoked for the release of the sixth book, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, in 2005. The hype surrounding the book was huge, because it had been two years since the previous book's release. Unfortunately, that moment was in the early days of internet trolling. After the book was released, but before I got a chance to get a copy, I got a voice message from a friend on Xbox Live. Hey, uh, I just want to let you know that on page 606 of the new Harry Potter book, that Snape kills Dumbledore. Come on. The Snape Kills Dumbledore spoiler was an early internet meme designed to ruin the book for fans before they read it. Trolls posted videos of spoiler drive-bys at bookstores during the midnight release. Look at this asshole. Snape Kills Dumbledore! First of all, f this guy. Second of all, it didn't even work. Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince sold just as many copies as previous books in the series. Spoilers are everywhere in today's age of on-demand streaming and social media. But here's the thing. Spoilers really don't spoil anything. In a poll commissioned by Netflix, 94% of viewers said that knowing a spoiler doesn't prevent them from watching a TV show. But we still get super pissed when we get hit with a spoiler. Hey! Snape kills Dumbledore. The way we consume our stories has changed the way we experience them. So in this new era of entertainment at your fingertips, is there a place for spoilers to fit in? For the purposes of this video, we're mostly going to stick to TV, just because it tends to be the most spoiler prone. A spoilerific plot twist or big reveal is perfectly suited for serialized TV. A cliffhanger at the end of an episode or a season can keep an audience hooked. Daytime soap operas beat this plot device to death. I'm carrying John's baby. The peak of cliffhanger TV came in 1980, when Dallas ended its third season with the dastardly character J.R. Ewing being shot by a mysterious assassin. Who shot JR was the question of the summer. Anyone in the ensemble cast had a reason to pull the trigger. The suspense dominated water cooler talk and inspired a song as fans waited for eight months to find out the answer. Why do the people all hate him so? Why they shot him, I'll never know. He's the star of the picture show, JR. It was this lady who shot him, the mistress. That cliffhanger remains the show's most iconic moment. 350 million viewers tuned in for the season four premiere. In 1980, you had to wait months to resolve a juicy cliffhanger. Networks benefited from this by building hype and anticipation. But streaming services like Netflix don't care if you watch a show the day it premieres or five years from now. They just want your monthly subscription. So releasing an entire season all at once doesn't kill viewership. You have, at best, a weekend's worth of time to watch a new show before spoilers start popping up. In that same Netflix survey, 76% of respondents said encountering spoilers was inevitable. But there also might be another reason for so many spoilers these days. Around the early 2000s, TV started to change. Directors and showrunners ditched the rulebook on how shows were supposed to be structured and characters were supposed to act. Shows like The Wire enriched the storytelling by making characters morally complex. The good guys did bad things and vice versa. Cultural anthropologist Grant McCracken has studied how modern audiences watch TV. 
He said that the more complex stories in modern shows lead to what he calls oh my god moments. Basically, part of the reason there is so many spoilers is that TV got so good. Fans found it impossible to keep things to themselves. Like, did you see that? A little kid shot Omar. Omar. But like I said, spoilers don't really spoil anything. One research study tested the impact of spoilers on short stories. Two groups read the same story. One group was told the ending, and the second wasn't. And then both ranked their enjoyment. The group that knew the spoilers, they said they enjoyed the stories more. But how can spoilers be enjoyable? Fans of the TV show Lost were surveyed about why they actively sought out spoilers online. They said knowing spoilers allowed them to dictate the terms of their own experience by filling it with anticipatory curiosity. Knowing a spoiler lets a viewer focus on the how and why of a story, picking up narrative clues they otherwise would have missed. We have to go back! It's like watching TV in detective mode. I'm not saying that spoilers always enhance the watching experience, but they probably don't deserve the rage-inducing reputation that they've gotten. Some stories are better experienced fresh for the first time, but good stories are good because they have merit beyond their big plot twists and major reveals. I mean, you can never beat this moment. No, I am your father. What's the biggest spoiler that you've ever been hit with? Let us know in the comments below. It's up to you to decide if you want to say spoiler alert. And like and subscribe for more Cheddar deep dives and breakdowns.